Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a complete beginner's guide for Traveler's Rest here in 2023. This is the fantastic tavern running simulator that combines elements of Stardew Valley and Graveyard Keeper and creates a really fun experience where you get to run a restaurant, serve drinks and beverages, keep it clean, eventually open up rooms for travelers to stay. You get to farm, collect resources, craft, build, decorate, all kinds of amazing systems in the game. And what I'm going to do for this guide is fire up a brand new game so that you can play along with me or watch. And I'm going to explain my thought process. I'm going to talk about the UI, the controls, how to play the game, some basic tips and tricks, and cover all of the systems as they emerge with a new game. But I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm not going to min-max. I'm not going to talk about the fastest path to do anything. I'm just going to provide you with the basic fundamentals so that you can enjoy the game at your own pace. It's really a wonderful game. There's just a few things that deserve some more teasing out and explanation. And this way you can make a determination on if you want to purchase the game yourself based on what you see here or if you have the game and we're having some difficulty understanding some things hopefully this will shed some light on it because I'm going to be very thorough and detail oriented and talk about every single thing in the game to help uh, new players enjoy it so I'm going to just fire up and say play and go new game and we can kind of create our character here there's a lot of fun customization that's possible I'm just going to uh, you know change my hair to something like this this looks pretty fun but I need to change uh, the hair color to uh, do you have a lighter that's good and then the beard color okay that's fun and then my shirt uh, what options do I have a vest might be nice. We can change the undershirt to blue and the vest to a, a lighter blue. And then the trousers, we can... Uh, shorts seem a little bit inappropriate. And we can change that belt to blue. And then our shoes, um, well, we want the shoes to, of course, uh, be dark blue. But we can find something. Uh, yeah, this looks great. This looks amazing. And I'm just going to say, accept. Would you like to activate the tutorial? I am going to activate the tutorial because I'm assuming you're starting up the game from scratch and you need all of the basics and I'll add my own knowledge of the game to this. So let's say accept. Welcome to Traveler's Rest. This game is currently in early access, which means it's still being developed based on your feedback. If you enjoy your time, please consider leaving a review to support this indie project. Thank you. And this is true. Like at the outset, this game is in early access. There was currently a update was just released that introduced farm animals to the game. And the game is changing and evolving as more material comes in. But to be honest, most of the early systems and loop is established. There is a ton of content in this. So if you buy this early access, know that you're getting hours and hours of things to do. I still haven't even, uh, you know, expanded my dining area, kitchen, or uh, in itself to the levels that I want to in my own Let's Play of the game. And by the way, if you do want to see more footage of the game or see the game further along in terms of progress, I have a complete Let's Play. I've streamed the game. I've done a Let's Play. I learned from people on stream. I learned through my own trial and error, and I'm using all of that to kind of create this guide. So I'm just going to push options. Now, I am playing with a controller. You can, of course, play this game using mouse and keyboard if you like, whichever seems best for you. I have found that it's fun to play it with a controller. It works just fine. So that's why you're going to see all the controls in the tutorial reflect that. Uh, so uh, what they're telling us is you can use the left stick to move. You can hold left trigger to run. Now pay attention. The sprint is something you're going to be doing all the time. There is no stamina bar. So you can just run endlessly. And I do it a lot. And then press left on the direction pad to enter decoration mode. So if I do that, you'll see that I'm in decoration mode. While in decoration mode, you can place items. 
to select an object, move the cursor over it with the right stick, or get closer and press A, try selecting the table. So that's what they want us to do. Now, first things first about decoration mode. You're going to see that there's an orange glow around the screen, and then the workspace area that I can modify has a moving dashed orange line. This is just your visual indicator that you are in decoration mode. In the bottom left, you're going to see a hammer and some tools down there. You can walk over to something, and then when you're close to it, you'll see how this table has a yellow outline, meaning it's selectable. So I can just push A on the controller, and I now have it selected. I can move it with the right stick and place it with A. So I can just kind of put this table wherever I want. And I don't have to actually be close to it with my avatar like I'm in Factorio or something like that. I can just move this around and place it. You can push the right bumper to rotate it. And I'm just going to put this table right here for now. Customers need a place to sit. Place the benches so they face the table. We will. All right, so I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to kind of pick up a bench. And I just moved my right analog stick like I would be moving the mouse and selected the bench you can rotate it using the right bumper and press Y to add it to your inventory so if you want you can just actually pick it up with Y and put it in your inventory P place the new objects to do it enter decoration mode um, with left on the directional pad which we're in right now select the item on your action bar using the right bumper and left bumper and press X to pick it up and place it using A so what they're telling you is if you look at the bottom of the screen and let's just take a moment to observe the game UI and the screen itself and so I'm just kind of going along talking about moving and moving the bench but here we are this is the dining room of our brand new inn that we've opened so you can see we have a bar at the top of the screen. There's some taps for beer. There's a little book in the upper left corner. We have some windows. There's a door at the um, top of the room. There is a fireplace. We have a large wooden area to, you know, put furniture and such. There's a candle on the floor as well. In the upper left, you're going to see the time. So it is currently like 8.20 a.m. And that will show you in digital and analog form, uh, form what time it is. The closed sign that's hanging down below the clock means that the bar is, my tavern is currently closed. And then there is indicators for how much gold, silver, and copper I have, and I have no money. Time is moving while we're doing this, but here's a tip right at the beginning that I'll tell you. There is no real pressure on time in this game, at least as it stands. There's no impetus to be like, oh, I have to move as quickly as possible. And, and if I you know, get behind because I'm moving too slowly, I'm going to lose out and I'm going to miss milestones or something like that. You're not. There, there is no push to have to do things super fast unless that's what you want to do. But I recommend just enjoying the game, taking your time and not worrying or stressing about it at all because uh, this is just a really fun game that it can be a chill experience even though it gets very hectic as you can you'll see later so anyway in the upper right of course we have the tutorial in the bottom right there's a heart with a number that says 37 and that is the comfort level my screen logo is kind of blocking out uh, some of that number, but it, basically that reflects how comfortable people find your dining room, like how attractive and nice it is. And then in the center of the bottom of the heads-up display or the HUD, you'll see that we have a very normal-looking action bar with items that we can map to the number keys, one through zero, or um, if I'm using a controller, I can select between these using the right and left bumper. And then there is a level which says level zero and has an experience bar, which is my reputation. I have no reputation, I've been doing nothing. So we're gonna get that filled up as people come and enjoy their time here. Now, what they're telling me is that if I select number two, which is the bench on my hotbar, I've got the mop on number one, and I've got some wood um, in zero. If I select this and then press X, I will pull it out of the hotbar, um, and now I can just place it. And when I'm putting it next to a table, this bench, you see how all the arrows become green? This means that it will kind of tuck itself in and be used by people who sit down at this table. You'll see how it gets a little bit closer. Now, I can actually just move the right analog stick, and you'll see the mouse cursor appear, and just hover over this, the mouse will become a hand, and I can just then push um, 
the A button to pick it up, and I don't even have to put it in my inventory. I can just move this over here. Lots of times benches will automatically rotate their orientation for you to fit, and now I just push A and it's tucked in. Customers will expect their table to be well lit in the evenings. Try placing the candle on the table. Candles are consumed over the course of days, so you'll need to replace them in the future. So we'll close this up. And this is the, uh, absolutely the case. I'm gonna just move my mouse cursor, push A to pick up the candle and just drag it and just put it anywhere you like on the table. We can just put it like right in the center of the table like that. Exit decoration mode. Get closer to the book on the bar and press A to open your stock. All right, so right now, um, you need candles in your bar because people will complain if they have to eat in the dark. They don't like that. So you're going to be putting candles down a lot and they will visibly melt down so that you can see how much is left and you will just kind of need to replace them. They're actually kind of expensive at first, so just keep an eye on that. So we're going to exit decoration mode by pressing left on the directional pad. You'll see that the orange glow and the orange moving dashed line have disappeared because we're no longer in decoration mode. And I'm going to go over to this book on the bar. And this book on the bar tells us what we have in our reserve for food and drink. So I'm going to push A to open this. Storing food here will add it to your bar's stock. When your bar isn't stocked, you will serve gruel. Gruel only rewards a small amount of money and reputation. So this is terrible. You don't want to give people gruel because it gives you the absolute bottom amount of reputation and money. But I suppose it's better than nothing because we don't have anything. Press down to open your tavern and serve some gruel. Remember to exit decoration mode. So this really threw me off when I first started the game. But you can't be in decoration mode um, and move things around if your tavern is open, except for some small things like candles. There are some tasks that you can do, but rearranging tables and things like that when the tavern is open is a no. So if I push down, you'll see that below the clock in the upper left corner, the sign is flipped to open and it says you have a quest. Press the um, select button to navigate to it uh, with the right and left bumpers and see what we have. All right, so I'm going to go to this and you can see that this is the, um, you know, kind of pause menu screen. And from here, you're going to see that we have a quest panel and I'm in the quest panel now, and it just says serve six customers. And as a reward, we're going to get two experience, and we're going to get um, some other seating arrangements and some candles for free, which is great. Like, we want all of this. Now, let's just navigate this menu while we're here. I'm going to push right bumper, and this is the technology tree that you're going to start unlocking the ability to make new drinks, new recipes, craft new items, but we have to get Tavern Reputation 1. Remember the level 0 at the bottom center of the screen? We have to get Tavern Rep 1 to unlock this. We get Tavern Reputation by having guests come in and have a positive experience. The more comfort, the better the food, the better the drink, the better the time they have, the more reputation we will earn. I go over here. This is what you spend experience on. So you'll notice we said we get two XP for doing that quest. You use XP, okay, to level up different attributes of your character's ability to farm, build items, sell things, um, you know, clean, sprint, etc. Then you're going to see that we have a recipe book, and this is going to store the recipes that we know and that we can make. So right now we have porridge in there and we can move with the trigger. We have mild ale. We have some tomato sauce. We have some other items in here. Uh, we have some items that we can craft. And this just shows everything that we know how to make and can produce at the moment. Now, if it's in red, we don't have the ingredients for it. Okay, I'm going to push right bumper. Um, actually, I have to push left bumper, go back to quest. Then we can see our inventory. All I have right now are my mop and 20 pieces of firewood. And then at the far left, this is your overview screen where it gives you um, your satisfaction level of your tavern, your reputation, your max occupancy, um, how much money you're making, all kinds of just statistics about how you're doing. So let's serve some customers. And we've got the quest and the tavern is open. 
And um, do I need to actually do something to view it? Okay, anyway. People should start coming in and wanting terrible food. Here they come. So this guy comes in and a customer has requested an item. Move close to the customer and press A to serve them. Remember that the decoration mode must be deactivated in order to do any action. So you can't serve people, you can't interact with them while you're in decoration mode. Remember, you can always go in decoration mode by pushing left. Now you'll see at the top of the screen that all three of these people want gruel. So you just walk up and you give them this. They give you 83 copper. You can see that floating there. You just walk to them and push A to serve them. And you have unlimited of this. And you give it to them. And we completed the quest. So customers will come up and order things at the bar. And across the top of the screen on these drop-down ribbons, you'll see the different items that they want. So if they want food or they want alcohol, you'll see exactly which item that they want. Now, if the item is in your stock, all you have to do is push A and you'll automatically get it. If they order a particular alcoholic beverage, like a beer or an ale or something, you'll have to go to the appropriate tap and pull the drink and serve it. Or, I don't know if they'll ever take this out of the game, but currently, I'll show you, but as a power hack, you can pull the beverages, pull all of the different cups of alcohol, and then put them into the stock. And then if somebody comes up and orders that drink, you can just push A and automatically distribute it just like you would a food dish. So we got this quest complete. You can see we got some rewards here and we just say accept. Close up the tavern so you can place your new items. Call last orders by pressing down. This will prevent new customers from entering your tavern. So this is another thing. You can open and close your tavern whenever you want. All right. Um, so you can just open and close this up. And if you push down once, you just tell the people nobody new can come in, but I will allow you to finish up what you're doing and then leave. If you push down again, you tell people you have to leave immediately and you will they will give you all negative reputation in my experience because they don't like being thrown out on the spot. So don't push down again. Just push down once to close it up. And then, oh, it tells you right here, pressing down again will force them to your tavern to close but you'll lose reputation instead just wait for them to leave and you can see this is what's great about the game look at this they're all just here sitting at the table it has a capacity of six like three people on each bench and they kind of have a conversation and they talk and that you can just see them eating the exact dish that you've made and plus 35 that little green metal that's how much reputation we're getting from each customer and you can see the rep bar at the bottom start to fill up Set up a table using your new items. Go to decoration mode, select the item in your action bar using the bumper and press X. So now we can set up a smaller table and some stools. All right, so let's go to decorative mode and put down our new items. I already have my little table selected. I'll just push X to bring it out. And from here, I can just use the right stick or the mouse to move this wherever I want. Now, when you're placing another table, you always need to give enough space between another existing table so that your customers can get through. You can rotate this if you want the panels on this small table to match the direction of the uh, panels on the other table. And then we're going to go ahead and place that. And this table is so small that people can only sit on a stool at this table. So I'm going to take the stool from the hot bar here using the right bumper to select it and I'll just push A to place it. Now notice how it moved pretty significantly. That's because even though it looks like there's two blue squares here where you can put this bench, whichever one you put it in, it will tuck it up into the center, meaning this table can only seat two people. All right, so open your tavern and serve new customers, complete more quests to unlock new upgrades. So at the beginning, a lot of the upgrades are gated behind some small quests so let's see do we have any quests so if you come to the select menu which has these tabs i guess the pause menu regular when you push pause goes to this screen and it does pause the game the time stops and allows you to exit the game it is worth mentioning right now that if you want to save the game you must come up here i'll run and you must sleep in this bed just like in stardew valley or graveyard keeper to save the game you cannot simply exit the game right here. You will lose your progress. So make sure to rest before 
you want to leave playing to save it, okay? And let's see here. This looks pretty good. So I've left decoration mode by pushing left on the direction pad, and I'll push down to open the tavern again. And I'm just going to situate myself. But first, wait a minute. Look at what I did. I forgot to put a candle on this other table. So I'm just going to go to decorative mode really quickly, push X, and put that down on the center, and then leave decoration mode. Notice that, like I said before, you can actually put down candles in decoration mode while your tavern is open, but you can't interact with your guests until you leave decoration mode. I'm just waiting for all these people. These people actually sat down first and then came up to eat, and you'll notice most of the time people will come in with an order first, but they might come for a re replacement order or like, you know, seconds or something like that once they've already got their chair. The game will never give you more people coming into your tavern than you can seat, so you don't really have to worry about seating people. It will just give you a distribution equal to the amount of available seats that you have. So we completed the next quest, serving eight bowls of gruel, and in exchange we got some rewards which are alcohol and food, food and drink. So we'll say start, accept it, and it says you can now serve porridge and grog. Press A near the book and add the porridge to your stock inventory. All right, so this is um, an adult tavern, so we serve adult beverages like grog and ale. And with the porridge here, you can push, um, go down in the bottom portion of this screen is your personal inventory. And then if you push um, Y, on the controller, it will just pop up anything that you want into the stock. And then remember, this will automatically be selected if somebody chooses this. Your customers can only order items that are on your menu. And you can think of items in your stock here as your menu. So they won't ever request an item that you don't have. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, the grog you can't put in here. Okay, you see you have two kegs of grog. There's a GR in the upper right corner, and then there's a blue bar that's running vertically to the right of the barrel. That means how full it is. So we can't actually put it in here because it's a full keg, and that can only be placed at a tap. Notice that it does have a sell value of 25 silver. So it says press Y near the beer tap and add the keg of grog to the slot. So I'm going to put it right here at this red tap, and you just push Y near it. It opens up this screen. And then from this screen, you actually push the A button to select a keg, and it goes in there. And it says a table has become dirty. Press and hold A to clean uh, next to the table to clean it, okay? And then uh, before I do that, I'm actually going to uh, put the other grog in that tap. And you can see this table is visibly disgusting. So you just walk up to it and hold A, and you see a little green progress bar. Now, you can preemptively clean tables. So you can just clean tables really proactively if you want and they'll never get dirty another thing you could do is you could push up and now you see that there's a yellow box around the whole screen and what this is is this is tavern keeper mode and in this mode you can actually see if a table is dirty more noticeably than just the stains that are on the graphic of the normal table and this is called tavern vision which is what we have now it'll highlight important objects such as dirty tables floor dirt and important customers one of your customers has dirtied the floor, so we already have this mode active by pushing up on the directional pad. And you can see there's... I'm going to pause it just so I could talk about this without time passing too much. There's a spill on the ground. Now, to help you identify it, there's like a green arrow on it. We need to walk over there and mop it up. You want to keep tables clean, and you want to keep the floor clean, because if people are getting ready to leave and your tavern is dirty that will reflect on the reputation you gain from them. And if they eat at like a dirty table and they had a bad time, they're going to give you a bad review. So you don't want that to happen. You can actually lose reputation if a lot of people are upset. So you don't want that to happen. Let's come over here. And I need to actually select my mop, okay, with the bumper and hold X to clean that spill. These two customers want porridge. Let's run up to them holding a left trigger. Serve them. You notice, look at that. The porridge makes one silver 25 copper versus like I think the 88 copper that we were getting from just selling gruel. 
we're already up to 15 silver in money. You don't... You can do everything you want. I'm going to serve this one some porridge in Tavern Vision. You can push up to close it, but it's nice to have on when you're running to Tavern, just so you can quickly identify spills and such. Look, this table becomes green. You see how um, when it's dirty, it's more noticeable in Tavern Vision. It becomes green, and you know, oh, I've got to clean this. So... Move next to the beer tap and press and hold A to pull a beer. Then get closer to the customer and press A to serve them. All right. So first of all, I need to clean this table. Now these people want, um, you can go in front of them and they'll tell, notice how at the top you'll see what people are ordering, but then when you actually go buy a customer and select it, you'll see below that what this person wants. This person wants porridge. We completed it. We got a reward of a bar mat, it looks like. And we'll serve this person and this person. Now, this person wants a beer. So you need to go over to the beer and hold A to pull a beer, and you can give it to them. Now, notice that the beer goes into your inventory. So you can actually pull beer, and you'll see above me there's a yellowish-orange bar that's reflecting how full the keg is. I'm pulling all of these beer. Look at the action bar at the bottom center of the screen. In the third slot, I have now eight nine cups of grog oh table's dirty let's go clean it now i'm going to run over here to my stock and i'm actually going to um put these items in the stock this is always worth noting but you see how the four rows of lighter tiles here on the bottom portion of this reflect my inventory but also in your inventory is the action bar so you can jump down even one row further to the action bar and push y on these the grog cups and these tankards of grog go into your stock and it says now you have different dishes and drinks on your tavern's menu the wider the variety of dishes and drinks on sale the more money and reputation you'll gain remember that clients only appreciate variety if the recipes are completely different different ingredients or modifications to a single recipe don't provide variety to your menu okay so they if like you have pork and then it has like herbs it doesn't count if you have like pork with pears or something it needs to be a totally different dish so you can see we do have two items here and i'm actually just going to pull all of this and this person wants porridge so just walk over and push a you'll select the right item automatically oops they dirtied it just go over here and hold x mop it up the table is dirty let me clean this up and this is what you're going to be doing a lot in the beginning of the game you're going to be running back and forth from the bar to the tables and cleaning things up now i'm going to pull some more beer beer makes a lot of money you can see they're giving me 40 reputation slightly more than before because they had a better time the food was better i'm going to go into the stocks and i'm going to put all of this grog in there from my inventory now this person wants grog this person wants this great now keep in mind i do believe that for this trick to work and they might change this out of the game but if you pull beer directly and put it into your stock i don't believe they will order it anymore if a keg of that beer is not available so uh in the tap so you always want to keep one of those handy but that person just ordered beer notice how i was able to easily give it to them without pulling it's a great time saving device if there's no spill on the floor there's no table to clean you can just pull some uh, beer in your free time and help manage Oop, this table became dirty go back to vision you can see uh, easier it's dirty and then you notice how it started to glow this is because it's nighttime at 1900 hours or at 7 p.m it becomes night and in the night this is when candles are important people want candles to eat by and um, or any lighting device not just candles your tavern has become cold use the fireplace to keep your tavern at the perfect temperature if you don't have the fireplace lit people will get cold and they will leave you negative reputation when they exit so i'm going to serve these people really quickly i'm going to run over here and open my fireplace by pushing y and then i'm just going to push a and honestly i'm going to push y to put all of that firewood in there i don't need firewood um, on my person i'm just going to put it right in there and then you have to come back and push a to actually light the fire now if you leave the tavern cold for a long enough time in the bottom right corner there will be a temperature gauge that will be blue that will appear to indicate and tell you hey it's cold in here 
I'm going to pull some more beer. This person wants a beer. Bam. And we gave it to him. And look at that. We got an axe. Five mugs of grog. Fantastic. You've obtained a copper axe. Close your tavern and go outside to chop trees in order to advance your quests and gain new technologies. All right. So I'm going to push down to indicate last call. That person was going to order, but I told them last call, so they left. So I could have made more money if I just would have let them. But don't worry at all about money at this tutorial phase because you're selling the cheapest stuff and you're not making very much money. You'll make way more money later. Not a big deal. I'm just going to keep... Uh, I'm going to go to tavern mode, make sure there's no spills, and pull beer. And then I'm going to go to the stocks, and I'm going to dump all of this grog from my inventory in like that. But I'm not going to pull the rest of this keg out, because I want them to still order. You can see it's closed, so the tavern is now closed. And I'm going to go to this keg, I'm going to open it, I'm going to take out the empty keg, and put it in my inventory. You need to empty that out because if you want to make more alcohol, you're going to need your keg. So you want to have that there instead of having to buy new kegs all the time. And you can't put new beer there. Oh, look, this spill. I didn't even see it. Let's clean this up. Great. All right, so now let's go outside. And we they want us to chop down trees. So I'm going to push right bumper to select the axe and then come over here. And with the axe selected, once I'm next to a tree, you'll see it says X to chop. That will light up and become possible. If I'm not with the axe, no option shows up. And then you just hold X. Worth noting, everything that I've been doing so far, at least at this point in the game, there is no stamina. So you can cut down as many trees, you can run, you can serve customers, you can do pretty much everything without worrying about fatigue and stamina energy like you would in graveyard keeper stardew valley something like that so it's very nice and i'm just chopping down trees left and right but i'm gonna tell you something trees right now they look super plentiful plentiful um they are absolutely one of the biggest bottlenecking resources in the game which is wood you need wood for everything and when you ever you chop down trees it takes a long time for new trees to grow so they're saying quest complete you can make these two items you've obtained your first work area the sawmill build it outside the tavern using the decoration mode select copper sickle and press x to clear the weeds remember that if you won't be able to use it um, if decoration mode is enabled after building the sawmill exit this and go in and press a to open up its crafting menu okay so before we do that though by the way, in this game, the stumps clear automatically so far. You don't need to use a shovel on them. I'm going to go into my inventory, and I'm going to... You notice how I got oak sprout and chestnut sprout. This is something you always want to do. I'm going to push Y to just bring these from my inventory up to the hotbar. And then if, you don't, if there's something you don't want on your hotbar, you can always just push Y to put it out of there and leave yourself a space because you can't use something in the game unless it's in your hotbar items. And I'm going to go right bumper, and I'm going to plant trees for every tree that i cut down if i got a seed i'm going to try to plant so that i have more trees growing you want to always plant trees because you really can't have enough so wherever it turns green just put those in they'll take time to develop but now we've planted trees so now we're going to go over here and you can go to decoration mode and build this sawmill wherever you want so I'm going to go and I'm going to select with the bumper of the sawmill. I'm going to push X and you'll notice that it makes an entire work area. So there's the sawmill, which is like a table saw. But it also has many squares around it. You need a whole zone for this to be able to place it. I like to put it personally. I put mine about right here in my Let's Play. I like to have it really close to the tavern so I don't need to move that much. But you can't put it down where there's weeds. You see how there's red squares where the grass is? Wherever that is, that means that's blocking you from building this. So instead, we're going to just pick this up with the Y button, and I'm going to leave decoration mode. I'm going to push right bumper to go to the side, and we're just going to clean up all of this grass. You'll get some plant fiber. Remember, do this willy-nilly. There's no stamina. Just clear out as much as you can, and then see if you can build your sawmill. I'm going to select it like this. I'm going to push X in decoration mode, left on the directional pad. And look, I can put it down right. Um, 
I can't put it here. It's too close to my house. So right here is good. And then there it is. And I'm going to leave decoration mode. And you see how it like destroys all the grass for the work area. This is all part of the sawmill work area. I'm going to open this up with A. And it says each crafter has a list of recipes. These show the time required in for ingredients, fuel, and time. These show the required ingredients, fuel, and time. So interestingly in this game, you kind of set things. And if you have the ingredients, you start it up. And if the workstation requires fuel to run, you have to have fuel in it. And then you just let it go. And it takes time in the game for it to produce. But you don't have to stand there and manage it. It's just kind of crafting on its own. So click the name of the recipe to begin crafting. So right now, it says we want wooden planks. So wooden planks, you make five of them with two pieces of wood. And it takes ten minutes of game time, not real life time. I don't believe. Um, we'll see. Well, let me manage that because maybe it is 10 minutes, but I don't think it's that long. So you'll know that because at the top, you can see there's two planks and the number five. That's the output. And then on the right is all the ingredients. It's going to take two pieces of wood and I have 18 total, hence 18 slash two. I push A to queue this up. Each recipe takes time to craft. Once it's full, move closer and press A to collect the items. So I'm going to actually make a bunch of planks because they're great. So I'm going to keep filling the queue. And this way I don't have to come here and tell it to do it every time. It'll just automatically make planks for me until the queue is empty. And you could see here that it's filling up. Yeah, it's not 10 minutes of real time. It's 10 minutes of game time. So you can see it filling up pretty quickly. And if you want, you can go around and chop down more trees, you know. And you can push A to collect this. But it's just going to go to the next item in the queue. So I'm just going to go ahead and chop down some trees while I wait. You can see it's starting the next batch. You don't get a seed for the tree every time. It's getting late. Call last orders to give your customers a chance to finish their drinks before closing up. Well, I wasn't open, so I don't have to do that. It's already closed. You can tell by the sign. And we can collect this. We need five more planks, so we can wait a second for that. Now, you see how it's late. It's midnight. It's zero hours. 3 a.m. is the cutoff. If you are out and not in your bed and it's 3 a.m., you will pass out and you'll wake up the next day later in the day. So you'll lose time to run your tavern. As long as you go to bed before 3, you'll wake up uh, pretty early in the morning and ready to go. And we finished the quest. And now we got ourselves a pickaxe. A copper pick. You can use this to mine seams and get metals and minerals. Remember the decoration mode must be disabled to mine. So I'm going to select this really fast. It's at 3. And this rock, for example, I can just hold X and work on this big piece of stone. And chunks of stone are coming out. And they kind of gravitate toward me sometimes, which is nice. Now, you see how this bar has completely filled up and this resource is gone. Unlike trees... These resources like stone, the next day, this will completely fill back in and populate. So I'm going to collect all this, and I'm going to make some more wooden planks while I'm waiting. Um, I'll also make some wooden poles and more planks. Planks are amazing. Okay. So, for example, if I run up here, there's some coal that we can use for fuel. If I mine this, you know, I'll pick up coal, which is the best fuel in the game so far. These two little nodes of coal will give us some, but they never disappear, and they'll be back tomorrow. Trees do not do that, which is why you have to replant. I think it might be an environmental commentary, or it's just something that they put in the game to make it difficult to get wood, so you have to be selective. Either way, it's getting late. It's 1 o'clock, so let's come in and rest for the day. So you run up to your bed, hold left trigger to run. Now in your bedroom, you have a little chest and it says this is your bedroom, sleep in your bed to save the game. If you stay up too late, which is 3 a.m., you'll pass out. You can open this and you can store stuff in here. If you don't want to carry around something, you can store it in here. I don't recommend it right now because as you can see with your inventory, there is no weight. You can carry as much as you want as long as you have space for it. And you have a huge inventory and things stack up pretty nicely. So for right now, I like to keep everything on me. I'm just gonna jump into bed and sleep. And we're gonna rest, and you'll see that we wake up on the next day at 6 a.m. 
and it wants you to save the game every day and it does suggest multiple saves in case something goes wrong um, in the update and early access process so I have a save for like every day of the game that I'm into it and once you save it um, you are ready for the next day and it's 6 a.m. and it's time to start doing things again and this is a good place for us to end this first episode of the Complete Beginner's Guide to Traveler's Rest. We got to show how to open the tavern, how to decorate, how to clean, how to serve our guests, how to make food, how to pull beer, how to go outside and gather resources, how to craft resources at our first workstation. And we're just barely scratching the tip of the iceberg of what you can do in this game. I really hope that you're finding this to be useful. Please post any questions that you have about the game in the comments below, and I'd love to help you out. And stay tuned for more in this series. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Take care.